everyone welcome back for this project i'm going to be building some frames that i can attach my board games to so i can hang them up on my wall in my game room to start with i'm going to prep some plywood that i'm going to use to attach the board games to i had two full sheets of quarter inch plywood laying around that had been painted and was meant to be used for a different project that never ended up happening so i decided to use these and get them out of my garage so i can make some space and also reuse materials that were meant for something else So after a quick sanding to get a nice smooth finish on the boards, I took them back inside and with the help of my wife, we glued the two boards together. Now I'm choosing to glue the two quarter inch boards together because I ultimately want a half inch thick board to be the backer board for the board games when they're attached to because that will make a nice kind of heavy duty feel to these frames and I want it to feel like it's something of quality essentially. But I could have of course went and bought a half inch sheet of plywood and started with that but since I had these quarter inch boards laying around and I wanted to get rid of them, this seemed like the ideal way to uh, go about this project. Since the boards are already painted, wood glue is not going to work very well and holding these two boards together so I chose to use liquid nails instead. The main problem using liquid nails is it doesn't spread very well unlike wood glue. So my goal was to get as much liquid nails onto the surface as quickly as possible. While I handled the outer edge my wife doused the rest of the board with as much liquid nails as possible and then I came back and spread it around as best I could using a plastic putty knife. Once I felt there was enough nails on the surface to hold the two boards together we quickly put the top board onto it, tried to line up the edges as best we could and then to hold it in place I added a bunch of my weights and used clamps on the outer edges to hold it all together and I left it like this for 24 hours. After waiting the 24 hours to ensure that the liquid nails had fully set, I took the now half inch board outside and I cut all four sides of the board about a quarter to a half inch to ensure that the sides were nice and straight. I then brought my now half inch thick piece of plywood back inside and laid out all the board games on it so I could figure out where they would best fit so I know where I needed to cut the board at. I started by cutting off about 20 inches from the end of the board. This section would end up being used for Chinese checkers, chess, and Scrabble. After cutting off that first section, which would be used for the three smallest board games I had, I then cut the remaining part of the board in half lengthwise down the middle. These two sections would be used for the seven remaining larger board games. With my 4x8 sheet of plywood now cut into three different sections, I start by cutting each board game out one at a time. I purposely cut each board an eighth to a quarter inch wider on all sides so I wouldn't accidentally cut a board too small. This way it was never going to be smaller than its respective board game that was meant to go on it. To create the frame around each of the boards, I used 1x2s, cutting each one to its length that was necessary with a 45 degree angle on each side. You might have noticed as I cut the frame pieces out that the board games now have black paint on all of the boards. My original plan was to paint the boards and then attach the board game to their respective boards and then do the frame pieces. Ultimately I decided this wasn't the best way to go about the assembly process, but I didn't change my mind until after I initially painted each of the boards. Only two of the boards are actually perfect squares. The rest are all various sizes of rectangles. So as I cut each of the frame pieces, I marked which side of the board it was going to be, top or bottom, left or right, and kept them with their respective boards so I wouldn't have an issue trying to figure out which piece went to which board because some of the boards are very similar in sizes. I'm also going to use the 1x2s to be able to hang the boards onto the wall. To be able to do this, I'm going to cut a 9 inch long cleat out of the 1x2s which will be used for every single board game. I'm also going to use the 1x2s as a spacer to be able to raise the board up in the frame. So I cut a bunch of smaller pieces out for this and when I start the assembly process you'll see what I mean. 
With all my pieces cut, I'm now ready to start the assembly process. To start with, I'm going to flip the board over onto its face so I can attach the spacers to the back side of the board. The bottom side of the board will get a two inch long piece in the corner. The top side of the board is a little bit different. The corner pieces of the top of the boards are determined by taking the width of the board and subtracting the cleat size from it. Every one by two cleat is nine inches long and I did that on purpose just to keep things simple. But every board game I'm working with is of course a different width. So we'll start with something simple as an example and use Chinese checkers. Chinese checkers is exactly 12 inches wide. So after taking the nine inch cleat out of the 12 inch wide board, that leaves me with only three inches left and I need to have a corner piece on each side. So that only means one and a half inches wide for each piece. But I don't want that cleat to be super tight and have difficulty getting the board on and off the wall. So essentially what I did is I took that one and a half and I just subtracted an additional saw blade width from each of the boards and I pretty much repeated that process across every board I did. After attaching each of the corner pieces using bride nails starting by shooting them through the bottom of the piece and then through the top of the board to ensure that they couldn't go anywhere I then started to attach the frame pieces using combination of bride nails and wood glue. Once they were all fully assembled I took the game boards and I painted them black. With the frame pieces on it's a lot easier to paint everything as a single unit than to try to work around the board game while painting because you're always probably going to risk that chance of getting paint on the board game itself. As you can see, two of the game boards are fully painted black. Those boards are for Life and Chinese Checkers, both of which have board games where they have holes in the boards and you could see through them and see the board underneath. So I wanted those boards to be fully painted. The other ones have been left unpainted in the center because some of the board games are very similar in size. And so I can still see the name that's written on each of them. So I know which board game belongs to which game board. To attach the board games to my game boards, I ended up using hot glue. Now this is a very easy process just do one side at a time because of course hot glue dries very quickly. The advantage of using hot glue is that because it dries so quickly that basically within 30 seconds of applying it to the board game surface you're gonna have that final unit ready to use or you could start hanging on the wall you know and hand it off to your kids and immediately start playing on them. The disadvantage of using hot glue is that it dries so quickly so if you aren't very fast about applying it and then sticking that board down to the surface you're gonna have it dry before you get there and now it doesn't stick so I did find that I had to do some touch-up work after I got finished mostly in the corners on some of the board games but if I had to do this project again I probably wouldn't use hot glue I would use a glue with more of a working time so I wouldn't have to worry about this it would take longer to dry but I wouldn't have to rush as much Now that all the board games are glued down to their respective game boards, that will conclude part one of this video.